Computer Guru. So today I'm here with my good friend Wayne Pomposa and he's down for CD and he stopped by for a few days. So we're going to be talking about uh, projectors and what his preference is with brands and why you should calibrate your projector. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to go ahead and hand it over to Wayne and let him give you a little introduction and then we'll get into that. Hi guys, so uh, Wayne here. Um, I'm from the Philippines. Uh, Steven is my good friend here and my mentor in home theaters. I design and build home theaters for a living. I'm both an electronics engineer and acoustical engineer. So yeah, today we're going to be talking about projectors. So while Wayne was here, he calibrated my new NZ8. So uh, that projector is really, really bright. We ended up going with high mode for the calibration in HDR after it was calibrated. Mm -hmm. uh, it did make a drastic difference in the colors. The colors, of course, are off out of the box. Uh, I think it biased towards blue, which I noticed just uh, from my initial viewing. I'm not really a, a video file type person. Now this projector has kind of changed that. I'm, you know, gotten a lot more excited now that I have such a nice projector that can do so well with HDR and is so bright. So having Wayne come here to calibrate it, you know, was kind of exciting for me. Like I said, I'm not a video file type of guy, but I'm kind of getting there just because of uh, really this projector and just it's it's such a nice projector. So I'm gonna hand it over to Wayne. He's just gonna talk about video calibration and different uh, brands and manufacturers that he's seen out there in the wild. So of course a projector is a pretty big investment. So calibrating it is actually really, really important, especially if you're paying for, like with JVC, you're paying for black levels. And of course the black levels are really far better than anybody else out there in the same price point or at mm -hmm. the same price point. Mm -hmm. So calibration can be really important. So now I'm gonna hand it over to Wayne. He's just gonna talk about some of the differences and what we saw like in this room where the colors were off, the brightness and contrast needed work. Something you're gonna see like in all the, all rooms, you know, all the projectors mm -hmm. are gonna need calibration. So I'll go ahead and let him talk about that since he's the professional calibrator. Well, uh, first off, I would like to say that it's been really a blast coming over here. It's so awesome to yeah. check out your theater and um, well, see you for the yeah. first time yeah. after many Same years here, of, of being friends, right? Yeah. Um, your your theater is, is really good, yeah. It's uh, it's one of the best theaters I've been in. Awesome. Yeah, and uh, the sound is great. So we were testing so many demos yesterday, and yeah. I really enjoyed watching here. Um, yeah. So uh, video calibration. Why is it important? Well, it's kind of like uh, the same with what we do with audio, right? Mm -hmm. um, we want to have uh, a picture that is as accurate as possible, so that uh, the director's intent when they created that created that movie could be transferred accurately and properly. You will see what they wanted you to see. Um, the colors that they want you to see, you'll be able to actually see it mm -hmm. the way it was intended. It's also, of course, uh, it's gonna be a lot better when it's calibrated. It just looks awesome. The colors just pop up some more. Yeah. There are no crushed whites, wherein uh, sometimes when there are bright scenes, uh, the whites just go like they get crushed and you don't see the different shades anymore. Mm -hmm. And so when it's properly calibrated, you get to see that all of the different shades of white and textures that you're supposed to see. Um, for the blacks, also when, when the scenes get dark, you get to see the different shades of it instead of seeing just one whole black in there. Um, so I guess, yeah, um, definitely at, at the end of the day, it's more about... Uh, being able to properly see that picture the way it was intended so that we can enjoy it more. Yeah, we also had uh, the colors were very biased towards the blue Yeah, on um, this one, which made a huge difference. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Green, was it? Or was it green? Yeah, yeah. It was green. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. It, it was kind of greenish. Yeah. Um, JVC projectors, the new ones, the NZ series, mm -hmm. they're kind of like uh, more biased towards the green out of the box. Um, I've calibrated several of, of these new Z, Z series line mm -hmm. and uh, yeah, NZ7, NZ8, NZ9, all of them are, are biased towards the green out of the box. JVC versus Epson versus Sony, just some of the ones you've calibrated out there. Mm -hmm. And I mean, really, I guess probably the only big difference is going to be blacks, huh? Yes, yes. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I don't know if... The, the colors are also a big factor, I guess. Um some some displays just can't get close to the correct color yeah 
Mm-hmm. Um, projector projectors being projectors are uh, very limited in, in the blacks that they can do. And yeah. So that's why we have different the different colors of screen, right? We mm-hmm. have white sometimes. We have the the black dam- diamond screens. We have the uh, gray screens. Yeah. Uh, those are uh, more intended to improve the blacks because. Mm-hmm. You know when when the screen is gray or, or darker than than white, then you, you're gonna have better blacks. Yeah. Because they're gonna be darker, right? Uh, the, the contrast will will improve. But uh, of course, um, projectors being projectors, like I said, they're they're gonna be limited with their black yeah. colors or, or the blacks that they can produce versus an OLED, for yeah. example, right? Yeah. Because an OLED like turns off the pixel and it's really black yeah yeah the, the jbc is not as black as that but it, it's it's pr- very black i mean i felt that you know it, mm-hmm. it's mm-hmm. it's pretty dark the lights are out and if you're using masking like on scope as long as you're masking it i mean it, it feels black mm-hmm. but if mm-hmm. you don't have the masking on you do see the bars but yeah um w- with for my experience yeah. uh, with so many projectors that we have been calibrating through the years um I guess JVC is one of the best, has one of the best blacks I've ever seen. Yeah. It's just uh, better than any projector out there. Um, even even Sony, uh, Sony kind of like the, some models of Sony suffer from a very grayish mm-hmm. black instead of like black right off the bat. Yeah. Optoma is, uh, has a very good gamma, mm-hmm. but also suffers from like a very light kind of black. Mm-hmm. Um, Epson is very good, uh, mm-hmm. both for its blacks and uh, colors, mm-hmm. but the but the JVC just blows them all out of the water. Yeah, and that's one reason why I went with JVC is because of the blacks. Mm-hmm. And as I wasn't really an OLED fan, but now I do have an OLED in my it's actually in my bedroom, just because we don't sit. Uh, it drops down from the ceiling, so we're off axis vertically. So I really needed something that wasn't backlit, just mm-hmm. because I didn't. You know, they wash out when you get off axis, and so. You do get kind of spoiled with the OLED, but I mean, this one is probably, the blacks are almost as good on this JVC as my Sony. I have an LED, not an OLED, just, you know, a backlit LED in the living room. So it's blacks aren't, you know, off. It doesn't look like they're completely off like an OLED does, but it's very, very comparable to the projector. Yes, yes. Yeah. So, I mean, it's mm-hmm. uh, it's very close to a regular LED. LED backlit TV. I mean, in my opinion, yes, I mean it's yes, it's pretty yeah. darn good, but of course not OLED. Yeah, you know? yeah. Um, a lot of it also has to do with the bleeding light. Mm-hmm. Uh, when you when you have a sixteen by nine screen, and you have a uh, two point thirty five when you're watching or a cinemascope yeah. when you're watching aspect ratio, what happens is that some of the light bleeds below and above it when mm-hmm. it should be black, and so of course that contributes to the the lightening of, of of the black itself when you have a full picture 16 by 9 and there are dark scenes and some other colors in there the the black becomes blacker through like the opposite colors being highlighted and so of course you see it blacker but when you do have that cinemascope uh, uh, picture and you have a 16 by 9 screen and the light is bleeding out below and above it that that just gets yeah. really gray instead of black yeah like you uh, you perceive it like your perception i guess because mm-hmm. i know mm-hmm. when i put my ma- masking panels on i have the seymour magnetic masking system in here and if i am watching something that's scope and doesn't like change aspect ratio i'm a fan of stuff that changes aspect ratio but if it doesn't i'll throw the masking panels on there mm-hmm. and it, mm-hmm. even though it's not any blacker you perceive it as blacker i guess because you don't have the gray bars above and below yes to yes. kind of just yeah. like a perception thing. Mm-hmm. It, it, the opposing colors and light make it make it more contrasted. Yeah, I guess, and so it makes it more black in your perception. Um, let me also say you have really good uh, design here for your projector housing. Uh, I like it. I like oh, it. thank you, thank you, thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like it hidden. Uh, the glass was kind of cool, and sometimes I wish I had done two rows in here, but. At our stage in life, we just uh, we don't have a lot of visitors, and the kids they're like on the floor watching, you know, on a beanbag, like they're freaking their, mm-hmm. their heads are like almost on the screen. I don't know how they sit that close. So for us, you know, having multiple rows didn't make a lot of sense when we were building. I do like the look of multiple rows a lot, but it allowed me to do the you know the cool 
feature wall back here, the base trap wall with the hidden projector mm -hmm. and all that. So, yeah, and it, and it also, it's kind of like a hush box where we can quiet the fan down. Because on high, the NX8 does, or the NZ8 does have some audible fan noise. But before you came, as you know, I put mm -hmm. some extra duct board, duct board up there, there trying yeah, to silence yeah. it. And it actually worked really well. We don't really, it's not an issue. And we get the extra light output on high that we really need it for HDR. Yeah, I can't hear the fan at all, even at high mode. Yeah. Maybe my ears just, you know. Oh, you good. said you can hear it, but 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 I don't. But I, I can can't. <laughs> I can barely hear it when it's like dead silent. I can hear them kick up a little bit, but not bad. Yeah. So. And you have a very quiet theater in here. Uh, yeah. Very low noise floor, so really good. Yeah, if it's noisy out there, I can come in here and sleep or whatever. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Get okay. some peace and quiet. Wayne does do home theater design. He does renderings too. Actually, I send my guys to him for like if they want a 3D rendering, you know, uh, to see how their room's going to be. Because a lot of times, like you don't know how, you, how your room's going to look. I mean, you got this idea in your head, but to be able to see it rendered, and, and actually, when I did my room, some of my features, he he did a couple of renderings for me. They were they were too ornate at the time because I was building the whole house and it was kind of I needed to do something quick and simpler. So that's why I went with what I did. But I did use some of his designs. And in his renderings, he gives you a 3D rendering as well. And I actually put the goggles, you know, the headset on to look mm -hmm. at, like, the upper feature. That's part of his design that he designed in the medieval uh, theme that he did. And I would put the headset on and look around the room just at different build aspects to build it in here. I mean, so that was pretty cool. So it's a, it's a really good option if mm -hmm. you're, you're just not sure how your room's going to look and you need help designing... You know, the room, the he does the whole package, but I really love the 3D rendering. Uh, his information is going to be down in the description. He's got a Facebook page. He's starting a YouTube channel. Yeah. yeah. And so he's going to have, you know, uh, all the rooms he's he's done and a lot of the ones, like you'll see renderings of them, and then a, it might be a year later they'll actually get built, and it's really cool to see that happen. Any improvements calibration can make to just uh, watching scenes that maybe aren't super bright or super dark? Yeah, definitely, definitely. Um, the pro a calibrated projector or a calibrated display mm -hmm. definitely uh, improves a lot. Mm -hmm. um, of course, it's going to depend on how good the projector or the TV is out yeah. of the box, right? But uh, generally speaking, um, it does improve a lot and your picture quality uh pops out more mm -hmm. um, it's kind of like difficult to ex really explain it but your colors are more accurate the picture uh, that was intended because because you know they do uh, color gradation right mm -hmm. uh, w when they're doing it on on the studio so if you get the correct picture of it mm -hmm. you're gonna get the, the best picture you, you can possibly have yeah when you're watching any kind of scene, the dark scenes they do edit those mm -hmm. to make it, you know, you so that you can see the shades of it. Yeah, the different colors there are still present during bright scenes. They they also edit that, you know, to to have it as so you can have as much detail as possible mm -hmm. while still having the best picture quality. So yeah, uh, definitely when your picture or your projector is calibrated you're you're getting the best picture possible yeah well, like even an outdoor scene where maybe there's a tree mm -hmm. with tree bark i mean you might yeah you know if it's not calibrated and you're you you're may not probably see seeing, all the yes. dimensions of the bark yes like the different shading yes yes yeah. you're, you're you're definitely seeing less a lot less detail yeah than what is intended yeah so I mean, you may have a razor sharp picture your focus is perfect but you're not seeing the depth of the different colors yes. and shading yes yes yeah. so a lot less like detail on it yeah um you'll you'll be able to see it when when you put them side by side and uh when when you're actually like used to watching a calibrated picture mm -hmm. and and you see a tv for example that's not calibrated you you immediately say wow that's bad yeah like yeah. that's that's that picture is terrible <laughs> yeah. you know because you, you, uh you, your eyes are so used to the calibrated picture or yeah. a calibrated display yeah, we did a bunch of uh, watching after you got done yesterday, but then like last night, the kids come in here every night and play video games. They were playing Minecraft, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and uh, like just the reds and the greens mm -hmm. seemed a lot more vibrant. Like the colors just seemed, you know. And I, 
I come in here every night. You know, they're in here playing video games. I'll come in here just, hey, what y'all doing? Just, you know, mm -hmm. so I'm used to seeing the picture, but even, even a video game that wasn't in HDR or anything, but I mean, the colors looked much better. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, so yeah. I, I just noticed that. I was like, the greens yeah. and the reds were just popping. It was just... It just looked it looked better, but a non HDR 4K, just a 1080p video game was, it was a uh, yeah, it's kind of cool to see. Thank you, yeah. thank you. Yeah. I, I had fun calibrating your uh, yeah, it was projector. It was cool because I mean I'm used to the audio side, which you even said it's kind of similar to audio, except that you have a you know with audio there's a little bit of listening or there, you know after you get done with calibrating to your to your reference or to your target, then, you know, you have to listen, you may have to do some tweaking, but of course with video, like you said, there's yes. set parameters you have a known target and that's yes. your, that's the target. Yes. Like, you know, yes. that's your goal. Yeah, so. exactly. So like it's in a way it's kind of easier to do yeah. than audio calibration. Audio calibration is very complex. Yeah. You're analyzing all the time while, while you're doing the measurements. Yeah. Right. And, uh, there are several different kinds of house curves, yeah. you know, some different schools of thought. But with uh, video calibration, the, the targets are like, it's there. It's yeah. the target, like you yeah. said. When you're done, you're done. When you're done, you're done. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's like, it's calibrated. <laughs> it's Check easier. the box. Yeah. yeah. You yeah. just try to hit that target and you're yeah. done. What do you think? Anything yeah, else? Anything I think else you want to cover? I think that one's good. Yeah, yeah. I think so. All right, guys, that's going to be it for this one. Check the description for links to Wayne's Facebook page, and he's mm -hmm. soon going to be starting a YouTube channel, and I'll have a description, or I have that down in the description as well once that is uh, once he gets that going. Don't forget to subscribe, hit the notification bell so you know new videos come out, and that's going to be it for this one, guys. I'll see you all for the next one. Bye. Yep. Yeah, you I guess did that's well? good. Yeah, I think so. You're quite good at this. Uh, I don't know, man. I'm no youth, man. <laughs> <laughs>